So your plan is you want to actually try and just create a viral video, essentially a hoax viral video. Yep, that's right. My name is Sakura and I am a social video producer at BuzzFeed. I spend a lot of time on the internet and recently I've noticed this new trend. People will go viral for having caught accidental horrors on film. And I think it's the accidental part that makes it that much more believable and scary. There's always a recipe to these viral videos and I want to see if I can figure this recipe out. I'm gonna go talk to my friend Aria because I feel like he'd be really interested in this. So your plan is you want to actually try and just create a viral video, essentially a hoax viral video. Yep, that, that's right. I want to base it off of this viral video that I caught posted by a girl named Savannah. She just captures this accidental horror of her walking out of her job at Subway and someone's hiding in the trash can. It's always so hard to tell if they're real or fake. The critic in me is always like, ah, I feel like this was staged, but you can't tell and there's no answers to those questions, which, which honestly I feel like that helps it go viral. I want to reverse engineer that and, you know, make my own version of it. Well, yeah, I don't know, what's the best way that I could go about this? I identified three things in this subway video which make it creepy, scary. Twist the beats a little bit to fit your own narrative, your own video, your own structure. And honestly, if you are able to do that, then it should in a perfect world, still result in the same kind of response. Yeah, I gotta do some research, so I'm gonna delve in and like see what I can come up with, and then I'll circle back. All right, I'm excited for it. Good luck. The history of photographers and filmmakers accidentally capturing something unexplained, yet blood-curdling, is one that has its origins in some of the biggest cryptid mythologies of our time. One of the most widely regarded examples of this is the 1967 Patterson-Gimlin film, a whole movie depicting a bewildered looking ape man, more famously known as Bigfoot. In 2006, a video was uploaded to YouTube that depicts two men walking through a forest in Spain. Allegedly filmed on June 11th that same year, the two men observe what appear to be large feathers. They pan the camera around until they land on an emaciated creature with open wounds in its back, who turns to look at them with a glowing and terrifying reflection in his eyes. In 2009, a New York City actor named Joe Cummings noticed food vanishing from his kitchen. To try to figure out what was happening to the food, Cummings set up a hidden camera in the living room. What the hidden camera captured was truly chilling. You can see a woman climb down from a storage vent in the ceiling, land on a high table, and then use another stool to get down. From there, she helps herself to food and drink and Cummings refrigerator and pantry and even peas in his sink. Authorities theorize she had been living there for at least two weeks. But it's not just amateur filmmakers who are capturing spine-chilling anomalies. In the 1939 movie The Wizard of Oz, during the scene in which Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow walk down the yellow brick road, a dark figure can be seen swinging between the trees in the background. The swinging dark figure is believed by some to be the body of an actor who was hired to play one of the film's famous munchkins. He apparently hanged himself after being rejected by his love, or so the story goes. But perhaps the most famous example of a haunted Easter egg is in the background of the 1987 movie Three Men and a Baby. Audiences around the world were horrified to catch a momentary glimpse of what looked to be a ghostly appearance of a little boy lurking in the curtains during a scene in Ted Danson's apartment. Tom Selleck, one of the stars of the movie, confirmed 30 years later that the apparition was nothing more than a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson. Which brings me back to today. Looking at how this idea of accidental horror content manifests in the age of the internet and social media. I did a little digging and I was trying to understand why this horror video is so viral. It's a regular video, nothing to be suspicious of. It plays with an irrational fear. In this case, it's the fear of being watched. It's unresolved. You get no answers to any questions that you have. So the bottom line is, it's an irrational fear come true in a seemingly normal video, but it raises more questions than answers. With all of this in mind, I decided to touch base with Aria and see what he thought. Usually these kinds of videos present themselves as regular videos. They're not like, ooh, something is really creepy near you. Like there's no like creepy music underneath or anything. It's just like super innocent Snapchat, Instagram story, you know? It hyper focuses on the, that scary moment. So like the girl in the subway video zooms in on the face inside the trash can. I'm hoping like whatever I end up doing, I can just like zoom in on that moment, give the audience the chance to really like notice what's wrong with the video. But have you had time to kind of 
think about like what you want your video to be. So like, I don't have an exact idea, but I did come up with a list of like my irrational fears. Someone stalking me when I'm hiking. Maybe someone grabs your foot from under the bed. So I don't know, I have a couple more, but those are kind of like, I feel like the easiest to replicate. If we're trying to cap pass it off like as a regular video, like in what instance would you be, for example, like just filming your foot at the end of the bed for it to be grabbed, you know, sort of thing? While on a hike, that's the type of place that you'd be filming videos anyways for, for your own personal social media and stuff. I could be at like going to Griffith or something and like someone's hiding behind a tree. What is out of place on a hike? Like, do you have any ideas? Like what's something that you wouldn't expect to see there that would be potentially freaky. I feel like we're really close. I feel like we're like, I, we just, I just have to do a little more thinking. I definitely feel like you're you're there. I think maybe even if you go to the, on on the to a location for a hike, maybe something will just come up, you know, come to yeah. mind when you see the space or something. I'm very happy to help. This is all very cool and I'm excited to see uh, what you come up with. I decided to recruit some of my friends that went to USC and studied film because I felt like they would have a really good sense of like horror. Cause I didn't study film. I just I just like the internet. So I got my friends Travis and Matt. And I told them about how I kind of wanted to do like this video that plays on the fear of someone stalking you while you're hiking. And Travis had the bright idea of going to the swing in LA. And my friend Matt was like, how creepy would it be? if someone's hands were just gripping to like the edge of a cliff. And I was like, genius, that's the move. We're gonna go to the swing and we're gonna have you hang off the side. Except he's not actually hanging. There's just this like little nook that you can get down on. So we just had him get some fake blood and grip onto the rock. And eventually we got a take that looked really convincing. I'm hoping that when people watch this video, they're gonna have questions and that's what's gonna fill up in the comment section. So how'd it go? How did the, uh, the, the shoot go? We ended up doing hands off a cliff. Actually, no, I, I just wanna show it to you. So let me send you this video. Very cool, very excited, okay. Okay. Oh shit. It hits all the beats we talked about earlier that you had come up with like those, when you've done your research, like the beats that you listed, like you, you hit it. It's like, it's it's a simple video. It's not overproduced. It's something you capture like real everyday stuff. It has a lot of unanswered questions. Honestly, you may as well post it now. I mean, well, how many views are we hoping in an ideal world to have by tomorrow morning? I don't know, it could be anything. Like it could be anywhere between 50,000, 100,000 and a, like crazy, like a million. Are you, are you nervous? Like how? I'm like nervous, but like I also just We'll want to post it, you know? No matter what, the video is great. And then worst case scenario, we'll just cook up another video idea. <laughs> Video's blowing up! Right now it has, I'm gonna check on my laptop. I posted this video 48 minutes ago and it already has almost a thousand views. 25 comments, that's a good ratio. I just woke up. Oh my god, the video is blowing up and my heart is beating so fast because I feel so bad about going viral over the sea. What am I going to say? I shouldn't have posted this on my account. Oh my god, what was I thinking? The video is now at 900,000 views, but I'm freaking out because I feel so bad that I'm deceiving these people. <laughs> don't don't feel bad. Don't don't worry about it because you know, as someone who's deceived many people including friends and family for videos in the past, you know, this is this is nothing. Like truly genuinely. I'm happy that the video is really successful, you know. It's almost at a million. I was just thinking if it got like 50,000, I would have been, you know, already like very happy for you. Like this is, it's, this is ridiculous in that number. Bottom line is, uh, it seems like you set out on a goal to try and figure out how to crack these type of videos and you did that by quite a, quite a long shot. So congratulations, despite the, the, the guilt. So I spoke to the team and we had a whole meeting about what we should do next, right? And I don't want to tell any more lies. 
So I'm like, hmm, what's the best way to do this? And for me, I think the best course of action is gonna be to just come clean. Here we go. Well, I just posted a video exposing the truth that it was a staged prank as I couldn't handle the anxiety that comes with telling a lie or like pranking someone. So I posted those responses last night and I've been too scared to check, but it's the next day and uh, we're gonna see, well, we're gonna see what the response is. Top comment, better say sorry, you baited us. The other comment, loving this, honestly, thank God. I took back my like. So you dot 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 lied to us. A lot of the comments were aggravated and I feel bummed about that. You know, they weren't happy. I've already admitted that this was fake. It was a hoax, you know, I planned it all out. But the video is still growing, which is really bizarre to me. I just found out that Yahoo wrote an article about the video. They didn't use my name! <laughs> After rewatching a random video she took, a woman spotted someone or something in the background that she couldn't explain. That woman being me. Sadly though, the footage is not real and Sagra tricked us all. The video is at 2.5 million views now, which is nuts. This video is really making me just remember that when you put something on the internet, it is truly forever. One cool thing about the kind of social experiment of it all is seeing like a genuinely good piece of content will go viral no matter where you post it. I was so focused on just trying to make this video go viral and that was my biggest worry. But what I didn't take into consideration was the aftermath of that. I posted it to my own account. So now I have, I'm like responsible for the commenters that are gonna be like, well, what the hell is up? Like, you know, and so I didn't really take that into consideration. What a journey that, you, that you've been on. Sakura, how are you? How are you feeling at the end of this uh, of this adventure? I don't know. I mean, I don't want to take away from anyone that's had actual paranormal experiences or like, you know, that's actually had to deal with like spirits and demons and everything. But I also realize just how easy it is to fake it. I mean, I know on my end, I'm like genuinely a little frightened by like how easily these things can be made. We've always been taught not to believe everything you see on the internet. But I guess even if it seems really innocent all the more reason to stay critical. You set out with a goal and you, you, you knocked it out of the park. Uh, so I think you might actually have a future in making more of these, uh, these horror uh, hoaxes. If you ever want to do more stuff for the Unsolved Network. I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs>